talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, because this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, a rather cold week for fishing and winter is only just around the corner. That doesn't mean it's over for fishing, with a tuna season about to head into top gear down at Portland, a cracking seven weeks ahead before the trout season closure and the all important calamari fishing that just gets better at this time of year. We're talking about calamari tonight and very shortly I'll introduce our special guest. But before that, as always, please welcome Adam Ring and Adam, you just happen to uh, work about half a K from the capital of land-based calamari fishing, Mornington Pier. Yeah, and there's plenty of calamari around, so uh, I reckon there'll be a fair few anglers hitting the rocks in the pier over the next few weeks and reaping the rewards. Absolutely, and a big welcome to someone who probably has no idea about calamari trelly. How'd you do that no idea thing? Uh, you know, when the councillor said it's okay for a pension to launch and charge them 17 bucks last week. Go on, do the no idea thing. No. <laughs> That's what Trelly's going to have him put into the calamari talk tonight. Now, an even bigger welcome to our special guest tonight on the couch, Dr. Corey Green from Fisheries Victoria, and I might add, the world's greatest squid scientist. Welcome, Corey. <laughs> That's a big intro, Dave. Yeah. That's How big many intro. of there are you in the world? Oh, there's Squid a quite, there, there's, there's, we get together about 50 of us in, in the world. 50? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. Where from? All around the world. There's squid fisheries all around the world that need scientists to, to look after them. Did so. I see somewhere you did a talk in Japan somewhere? Or? Not Japan. I've been to Spain yeah. and South America. And there's yeah. a conference in Japan this year as well. So, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I like about Corey big boys? Calamari. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> he fishes. Oh, you know, and that's the thing. Yeah. I, I don't know if people fully understand, but there's a very great facility down at Queenscliff, which used to be full of scientists until Peter Walsh sacked them all. <laughs> Corey, you don't get into that, right? That's <laughs> our commentary. Uh, and uh, and and the good blokes there, they all fish, and you love your fishing. You get out to those love Western love District fishing. lakes, and you were showing Absolutely. us uh, over dinner tonight before the show some lovely trout picks. You love yeah, all that from and from Tolondo there. Yeah, I, I started all the sports fishing when I was young, we yeah. were the line class, sort of one kilo line, yeah. and now I just love the fly fishing and yeah. getting to that. And, yeah. Well Delvin knew his personal life, so didn't worry about it. You've done a bit of taxidermy too. Oh, I used to do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. a few years ago, finished yeah. now, but it just everything sort of fishing. I grew up in that sort of that um, yeah. area of, of, of what I like and yeah. I just ran with it. Anything to do with fishing I like. Dave can usually stuff a calamari. <laughs> <laughs> usually cooks with it. Yeah. Talk about taxidermy. Yeah, stuff it, yeah. Um, one day when they get the, pro, yeah, the big networks, not us, um, the big networks, they get that program back, This Is Your Life, you'll probably be an inspiration to kids who love fishing and want to work in the industry because so how many kids do you get that go, oh, yeah. I want to be a marine biologist? Yeah. You know, they all want to be and they want to be dolphin <laughs> trainers and all that. And, yeah. and I think, you know, Corey, in all seriousness and, and uh, you're going to see some beautiful work by Corey tonight. Um, you are an inspiration to kids who want to go and chase their passion because I know what you've done and, and uh, some of the work you've done in the studies and some of the studies that you hope to get up. Uh, you're talking about doing some um, some study into kingfish. Yeah, it hasn't been approved yet, but no. putting in an application to, to, to look at kingfish in the bait, we just don't yeah. know enough about them. Yeah. So, yeah, so let's briefly touch, what are you going to talk about tonight? Calamari. Yep, calamari. Uh, it's a, it was a three-year project, mm. uh, and we there was a real need to, to work out their, their spawning behaviour mm. in, in the bay, what the habitat that they want to do, and where they move. You know, these are some of the fundamental questions that fisheries scientists like myself need to inform the managers yeah. to make informed decisions. You know, it's a sustainable fishery at the moment. So we need to make sure we keep it there. Yeah. Mm. The uh, the thing about calamari is, I guess, it's year round. I'd have to say it's year round. There's yeah, no, absolutely. and you, you, your science will say that there's some better times of the year than others. But yeah, it does. Yeah. it's certainly just a fantastic fishery all around. And it's probably the thing that saves a lot of people that when they're targeting other species and they don't get anything, <laughs> oh, I'm going to be a calamari. Yeah, it's yeah. quite easy. So, um, bread and butter. 
Just a couple of things before we move on now, just something to mark on your calendar for August, the Melbourne 4x4 Outdoor Show Fishing and Boating Expo at the Melbourne Showgrounds. August 21 to 23, we'll be presenting a live performance of Talking Fishing on both Saturday and Sunday. If you want to come and see us or just come along and throw stuff at us, mark it in your calendar now. August 21 to 23, Melbourne Showgrounds, come and see us live. Now, guys, a bit of fisheries news this week. Let's have a look at what's happening in the fisheries news of the world this week. And now it's time for the news. The fisheries news. Sounds a bit fishy to me. Pretty full on show tonight, so we're going to move at a pretty fast pace. Um, let's talk about the Super Trawler. People have been writing to us. Yeah. It's hard to get into debate and need the time. And um, But... Uh, Senator, the Honourable Richard Colbeck has come out with a media release this week pretty much saying that uh, the government is enforcing the ban on super trawlers uh, because they set some rules and it says here, and I'm going to read some of it. During the previous debate, Labor and the Greens defined super trawlers as vessels more than 130 metres in length. The coalition has accepted their definition of a super trawler and we've enforced a permanent ban on vessels more than 130 metres from fishing in Australian waters. This regulation takes effect this week. Senator Colbeck said the Geelong Star, which is the new one that's hanging around, is not a super trawler and falls under every threshold put forward during the previous debate. The Geelong Star is less than 100 metres in length and has a storage capacity under 1,100 tonnes, significantly less than the Greens definition of a super trawler as a vessel with a storage capacity greater than 2,000 tonnes. Uh, he went on to say the small pelagic fishery provides great value to the Australian community and is assessed as one of the most environmentally friendly protein sources on the planet. I know we're not going to have time to debate this. I'm just reading out what they're writing. <laughs> Old mate John from uh, Kingbait, you know, that yeah, drops the, big you know, the bait at the back. He reckons we should be eating pilchards three times a week. Yeah. Anyway, just... So I, saw, I, saw, I saw John yeah. when he dropped off some freshies and you're just yeah. hacking the heads off them. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that's, great too, <laughs> Let's, that's what Senator Colbeck said. Let's get on to uh, the next media release, which comes out of the Australian Recreational Fishing Foundation. Charlie, who are they? They're part of AFTA or side, yeah, side bit a, of AFTA? It's, it's, it's an association very similar to AFTA and there's a few of the guys who are on both. So the ARWF, um, they've tabled a proposal to the small pelagic fishery and uh, of its concerns and how it believes any impacts of industrial scale fishing on the small pelagic fishery of on recreational fishing can be minimised by managing where and when vessels fish and ongoing research into fishing the small pelagic fishery on the impacts of recreational fishing. Some of the things I've said is the SRPF uh, covers a large portion of Australia's coastline, including all of the major capital cities. The SBF covers some of Australia's most iconic recreational fishing grounds, including Port Mac and Portland right now. That's right. Uh, under le legislation for the fishery, the Geelong Star can fish within three nautical miles of these population centres, and small pelagic fish are a major food source within the marine food web that includes key recreational species. Now. You've been in some discussions today with Alan Hansard from AFTA. Yeah, we? we have actually. And, and yeah. the, one of the biggest concerns is that we're actually in the same territory here. So we've got recreational fishing mm. in the same territory where uh, these trawls are going to be. Yep. Um, very, very popular fishing spots, and we're very concerned, and there's not enough uh, study or science done. So that's going to. And the actual uh, the owners of the, uh, the trawl are actually in negotiations now to. Um, to uh, have a bit of a study over the next 12 months, which yep. is good to see, and we might not see those around some recreational fishing areas. Yeah. Can I put in layman's terms, because people don't understand the debate, but I think after a proposing a bit of a map, and they go, you can't fish here, you can't fish Absolutely. there. You're not going to fish around Portland and Port Mac where the, the activity is right now. You're not going to fish yeah. off Bermagui where yeah, we want the big bluefin to come in, we want the best out of the yellowfin season, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, AFTA so. firmly believes that this can be managed properly and uh, and sustainably within Australian Commonwealth waters. Yes, that's right. So yeah. So And separating the issue of recreational fishing to the commercials, um, and like you just said, you know, not having them sort of working the same areas yep. and the effects of what goes on. I mean, this is such a large boat and it takes, um, you know, it can take such a large quantity of fish. And it's, uh, this boat is, it's not unusual, but it's unusual that it's, it's actually really, really technically advanced. So, um, so it can target and can, uh, we're hoping it'll, they're, they're going to work with us and, uh, and uh, keep the recreational fishers um, out of their sites or their grounds out of their yeah. sites. So, yeah. yeah. 
That's it. I had one more story. I was going to talk about some tuna talks. I might uh, talk about that very, very shortly. But coming up on Talking Fishing Catch of the Week, and we look at how Corey Acoustic tags Calamari and Dice X1 as well. See you right after this. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Wow, have we got some catch of the weeks this week and it uh, wouldn't be uh, the same if we didn't kick off with a barrel, boys. <laughs> um, let's just get straight into it. Um, um, a beautiful uh, Port Mac cool. tuna. Small boat. I know the whole boat's not pictured in there, but I reckon it's about a 16-foot runabout. Mm. Might even be an old blue band Mercury on the back there. <laughs> I reckon yeah. they put a new cover on yeah. it. But uh, Amy Jobson, what a fantastic fish. I, went, I think it went 124.7 kilos. It doesn't show you how big those fish really are. Oh. We see them hanging from the gantry and all that sort of stuff, which is awesome but mm. being dragged That's over the man. size of, I guess, your average bay boat. Yeah. Mm. That is unbelievable. Yes. Obviously, yes. obviously great conditions on Port Mac that week. Yes. And uh, I know we've got a few more staff down there right now. Mark's yeah, headed down Mark, today. Yeah, Scotty's been there for two Mac. days. So yep. let's see how things turn out. Let's uh, let's keep going with it. Tim Hepner, a beautiful bag of whiting of Sorrento, boys. Um, Look at that. that water's Sorrento. cooling a little bit. Not, not many boats out, I can tell you, because it was near hailing down there on the weekends. And uh, thank you very much. A nice bag of King yeah. George whiting down there. They look like a bad size, what you typically get around They Sorrento. look right, don't they? Yeah. You would take nicely, that. Lo- nicely lined up on the bait board there, mm. too. Oh, or someone um, else on the peninsula, Dave, they can help you out when you catch another. No, someone needs, <laughs> to, someone needs to help you out in the whiting <laughs> stage. <laughs> you know how many I've got in the freezer? Zero. 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 Oh, <laughs> it's not good. Let's keep going. Uh, Declan Townsend, a nice snook caught off Tortoise Head Bank down the uh, yeah, we've been hearing about southern a few end of, these. of Western Port. Yeah, we've been hearing about a few of these yeah. uh, getting around the southern end of the port. And can you eat them? No, you, Did, I don't think you'd want to. Cool. They're a good gummy bait. Would you eat one of them? I've tried it once, Have you? and I yeah. haven't gone back again. So there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> so you tried it twice. First, first, first and last time. Yeah. Uh, let's keep going. It wouldn't be the same if we didn't have an elephant fish on the show. And Oh, oh look, no, look at that. Let's <laughs> jump to... We <laughs> missed the, ele- we miss <laughs> the elephant fish for some reason. There you go. There you go. There's Jeffrey. the elephant fish. Jeffrey, uh, don't know his last name, but anyway, Jeffrey Elephant, we'll call him. Yeah. Um, got a nice elephant uh, in Eastern Channel, I think it is. Oh, Eastern yeah, entrance yeah. or whatever. Of, um, of Westerport. Let's keep moving along. Natalie Powell. You can see we've got a big show and we're just cruising Powering through all through. these. Natalie Powell, nice bag of calamari off the tyre bank, one of the mm. capitals of calamari in Westerport. It's a great place. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep yeah, along. Awesome. Murray Cod off Mathara. Adrian Kumar, thank you uh, to his mates for sending that in. Caught off the bank on some scrubbies. There you go. Got to be over that. Throw nice back in. Too. Absolutely. And this one almost made catch of the week. That's what happens when a big bronzy swims up to the side of your boat off Portland, uh, courtesy of Matt Bolton on Jeez. Fish On Far Charters. Out. I think he's got, yeah, big bronzy, see? Uh, not a Mako. Usually you, it is yeah, a Mako, isn't it? But uh, he reckons it was a big bronzy swam up beside the boat and went bang. And uh, I don't know if you've ever had that no. happen to you, being sharked and, no, and that all fished a lot up in. Um, so my up, parents, up north, obviously. My yeah, parents were from Cairns, you know, and yeah. uh, used to fish, I think, get sharked all the time. You just get the most beautiful Annoying. Spanish mackerel on. No, wait there. No, wait till you can see it and they'll oh, just yeah. roll over. And, and they only get the good ones. Yeah. But anyway, all good. If you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your phone on TV, email your fishing pick to info at ifish.com.au. All right, now we're going to get into some calamari talk now, and we've got a little bit of footage coming up, Corey, yep, of yep. you, because you were the star of iFish one yeah, day. Okay. Uh, you did an episode with Paul Worsling, and uh, thanks to Paul and the crew at iFish, they're going to lend us the footage. But just before that, Someone sent in a photo of you trying. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. When, you went, when you went squid fishing. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, like this, Trelly, that was, that's how he went squid fishing oh, for the very no, first no, time in life. You idiots. <laughs> I don't know. People keep sending these photos in, Trelly. Oh, you uh, get around. Must be a cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Which anyway, one? Looks, looks like you on the beach. Move on. Yeah. Come on. Don't be right. silly. Um, like I said, courtesy of Icefish TV, let's have a look at Corey, and he's tagging some squid in Port Phillip Bay. A69-1303. Yep. Are they this Saturday night's test? I don't know. <laughs> they could be. Oh, could it. <laughs> so I'm just confirming the, the tag numbers and everything's all right. So 24713, that's what 24713. we've got. 24713. That's what we've got on our tag. Yep. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, let's get this slippery little sucker in the boat. You pull the net over. I'll uh, try and net it better the second time I did the first. 
And you really do love your squid, don't you? We need to look after this guy because what he provides for science could just be unbelievable, couldn't it? It could. Okay. Nice and gentle. Straight, straight into this bucket? Straight into the bucket, Paul. Now, just explain what is in this bucket. You put something in there, some chemicals or something before. That's right. I've got some solution called magnesium chloride, and it, and it basically all it does is is uh, sends it to, to sleep. It's an anaesthetic that will be applied to it, and it will uh, be there for surgery. How's the colours on that calamari? Isn't it amazing they, the way they can change to their That's environment? Right. Yeah, they're certainly, they certainly are a beautiful animal. Well, we'll just wait for this little boy or girl to go to sleep. And then it's time to operate. What I'll get you to do is I'll bring it up, hold it upside down. You hold the head end. Yep. Now I'll get my tag. Oh. oh! Did I mention the Calamari Sepia Toothus Australis has a directional funnel? Cameron says no. Let's get on with the serious business, right. mate. So what are we doing first? So we've got their tag. Yep. I'm just going to insert it underneath here. Yep. Straight through like that. And you want an orange thing which is here somewhere. I think the squid here is this. That goes on next. That goes on next. That little tag we put in there, it's an acoustic tag. What's it worth? Uh, about $350. No way. Science is expensive, let me just tell you that. Crimp. Now this is very slimy, tiny work. So we're doing our best to show you at home. So we put the tag in, then a washer, and then a little crimp. The crimp is under the camera there. How many calamari have you actually tagged so far with this uh, method? We've done about a dozen, and we've got another dozen to go. Beautiful. Get rid of that. So now. we're just going to give it the antibiotic pull. All right, that's straight in there. So that, that helps to heal the operation? That helps to heal. And we'll also get a dart tag. Now, can you explain a dart tag, please? Yeah, this is just a, an identification tag. It's got the phone number of Fisheries Victoria on it. So if you find a squid or catch a squid that's got one of these tags in it, ring the number and it'll help us a lot with our science work. There you go. So just watch your hand there and I'll go straight through here. This is very slimy work. Tags and in. There's our tag. And now we'll go straight over into the net pool. So, so pick the squid could, up. Yep, pick the squid up. Yep. And put it straight into the net here. Nice and gentle. Yep, straight in. Good. Now, the idea here is we can check the recovery of the squid. That's right. And see if he's swimming. That's right. And well, that might take some time, might take 10 minutes or so. So this is one of the calamari we caught this morning off Queens. We've had a pretty good session in the end. We thought it was important to get back here into the lab and do what Corey does for a living. Now, you bring these things back, you dissect them, and that teaches you more about the species? Exactly. We'll find out what sex it is and what sort of reproductive condition it is in. Now, I can see some green bits hiding in there, mate. Yeah, there's all sorts of things going on in here. Is this structure down this side and this side, what are they, mate? They're the gills of the squid. They've got one on either side, and attached to the gill is a heart. So we've got one heart here, another one here, yep. and we've got a third heart underneath here which pumps the blood around the body. That is staggering. Now, this bit here, it looks like mother of pearl. What is the job of that? That is actually our worst nightmare. That is our squid ink right inside there. Handy. And you think there's still some in there? Well, let's have a look and find out. Oh! <laughs> there we go. You actually know what you're talking about about these little things, don't you? <laughs> that Mate, work that on. is pretty fascinating stuff. Now, what do you got in your hand there? This is our acoustic receiver. So you saw the process there of putting one of the tags in the in yeah. the squid. The yeah, Prince Albert. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so we've got about seventy about about seventy of these receivers in Port Phillip Bay that we're used to to track where they are. So whenever a squid comes along with one of these tags yeah. in it, because it's electronic tag, yeah. it will record the date and time and the number of that tag on the squid. Okay. And it's within a 400 metre radius. Yep. So we've got these positions. So, uh, uh, you're saying these are important for the bait? What, you just throw them overboard? Or no, they... we've got them that we've got them on, on concrete structures. They sit about that about a metre or so off the off yep. the sea, sea floor. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they'll last for a bit over a year. And they're, yep. just, they're just listening. And obviously you know the GPS mark where you've put them and that. How do you get the data off that to analyse it to say, hey, I've seen squid 1, 2, 3, 4, yep, yep. 7, 6, C yeah. swam past it? Yep. We have divers that, to, that go out hmm. and they'll retrieve it and it's just a, a Bluetooth transfer onto your computer to no download way. the data. Nice. <laughs> You're serious? Yeah. 
Wow. Mm. Yeah. Now, you use that sort of stuff in snapper and, and some other fisheries, yeah? Yeah, look, there's been a lot of a lot of the data is being used. Uh, a lot of species have been picked up on these on these fish. You know, yep. we've got the snapper. Where there's been a lot of uh, gummy sharks, yep. um, Port Jackson sharks. Uh, all been tagged. Yeah, they've all been tagged yeah. over the years. Over yeah, yeah, the years, yeah, 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 yeah. So seventy of those. We're going to look later on in the show about where they're actually located throughout the bay. But one of the things that fascinates me because I know it'll be very tight towards the end of the show. Mm. You've actually got a curtain across. Port Phillip Heads, haven't you? Yeah, that's that's for Paul Hamer's project on on Snapper, Snapper. to see whether they're coming in and out of out of the bay. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll be able to find that. Uh, we're going to run out of time this season, but uh, I'd hope when we come back in August, September, and we get into the Snapper season, we'll probably get Paul on the couch like mm. we've got you today and uh, yep. talk about the Snapper stuff. Mm. But Did there's a good. curtain of those across Port Phillip Heads. That isn't that amazing? Yeah. That uh, you know that sort of technology is available mm. for fisheries science these yeah, days. That's great, Corey. Um, Squid, how long is that going to last in there? And, and are they got batteries, these little tags that fit in there? And you know, how long does that last? Yeah, these ones only go for about six months. Okay. And they're, yeah, they're really small. They've got a small battery in them. Yeah. Some of the, the, the larger tags can go for years. Yes, so the, those calamari that you tag now that was probably was, uh, would have been right the same about 18 months ago yeah that's Something right like that. so they're expired now yep. you're not you're not tracking them anymore no no, no they haven't the got squid any current ones well. that's right oh of course yep. yeah because how long does squid live for only live for a year that's all they live for there so they've go. got to do a Top. lot of mm. growing uh, yeah. and to, to reproduce in, in just one short we're going to look at the science of how you know how long <laughs> they live uh, yeah. later on we've got some, geez, we've got some, some really fascinating stuff but um, the old southern calamari is that all you're studying you're not studying arrowhead or cuttlefish in the bay or anything like no, that just the calamari to, uh, I used to study arrow squid uh, yep. I did about three years of studying arrow squid but you know, I've been in fisheries for about 20 years and I do you know, all sorts Sorts of fisheries research yeah. and science over the time. Well, if I was to ask you, what is the primary purpose of your study? Because you were funded from recreational fishing license yeah. money yep. to do this project. That's right. What's the primary purpose? Well, it's it's all about sustainability. Yep. Uh, we did not know uh, a lot about squid uh, in in Victoria. They did mm. in other states. So there's there's a certain amount of information that you need to, to manage a fishery mm. and we just didn't have fundamental information so we used the, the money to work out this fundamental uh, science yeah. to help the managers manage them uh, sustainably now yeah. and into the yeah. future. One yeah. of the things I guess that came um, about a few years back with snapper is that you know we started to understand snapper and their spawning and mm. you know whether it was successful or not each year and yeah. that science is essential when something goes wrong with a fishery. When it's, everything's going right it's all good yeah. Yeah, when yeah, something yeah, goes wrong yeah. and you need to make some tough decisions, it's good to know the science about yeah. it, isn't it? So and you need to have that backup yeah. too. If you yeah, can't no. make decisions on, on without the science, yep. and that's what this is all for. Uh, governments always criticised if they make uh, ill-informed decisions, and we've seen that around marine parks exactly. in the past, and it's good stuff that you're doing. Um, we're going to have a look at some more stuff very, very shortly. Coming up on Talking Fishing, product of the week, and we see how calamari do their business, you know, like make babies. See you after this. Talking fishing, talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome back to Talking Fishing. And uh, I can just tell you that behind the scenes, there is something funny going on for uh, Product of the Week. And I think Trelly's about to enter the building. But anyway, Corey, just quickly, um, we're going to look at some video footage very, very shortly about uh, a couple of calamari doing their business, like I said, making babies. Yeah. Um, how do you tell the difference between a male and a female? Yeah, look, there's a couple of ways. Um, one is you can open it up and you'll see the, the testes of the male, which is quite white. Yep. And, and the, the female's got the ovary down the tail. End. Yep. But another way is that the one of the arms of a squid hasn't got any suckers on the end of the uh, of the end of the, the tip of the arm. There's no suckers left. One of the candles or the uh, smaller no, tentacles. The smaller tentacles. Yeah. Okay. okay. Only so one. Only one. And that's that's what it uses to transfer the sperm to the female. Yeah. The male to the female. There you go. Yeah. Let's get into product of the week because I think the boys are ready. <laughs> We're back. Uh, Adam and Shelley, welcome you know, back in nice the building. Sit down. Yeah. Oh. Sit down. And take it away. Product of the week. I'll keep it short and sweet because we've got plenty to get through with Corey still. We're talking about everything you'll need to go and chase a tuna because if there's one thing worse than... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, I can't look at him. I'm rattled. Um, oh, you've got to stay comfortable. It's a long day out on the blue water. Portland is not the warmest place on It looks more like Earth. Elvis and a bloke ready but to go tuna fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've, there's no planning involved, so everything's way too big or way too small. Yeah. But 
Oh, I'll start from the start. Yeah. The, obviously the jacket first. This is not just warm and waterproof, but it's also a life jacket. Heaps of different brands on the market. <laughs> I knew but he was going to do that. There he is. Oh, that, I knew he was going to do that. That sound you can hear is Charlie pulling the button on it. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's like a kid. Look at him. Bear a mustache. <laughs> Imagine when he was at school. <laughs> Imagine when he was at school. I'd say we poor cut as you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Class is fresh. Trelly. That's a, that's a must have. <laughs> it's, it's hard to see, but Trelly's got a... Did you bring oh, out the boot? Can you stand up, Trelly, and show your pants off? Yeah, take your... No, we've got boots next. Oh, okay, boots. Boots. Oh, yeah. a, uh, footwear is a must. A couple, of, a couple of the boys from the crannies... They've got the old hand grips in them too, haven't they? They have, yeah. So yeah. you can get them on. Uh, there's a neoprene outer at the top. Um, and easy rubber. to pull on. I heard, they're Trelly, I heard Trelly's pretty good at pulling on. They're, keep, they're, they're keeping you... <laughs> um, me off they're keep, <laughs> they, keep, they keep you warm, they keep you dry, and they also keep your feet protected. We had a few boys from the shop go to Portland during the week. Yep. One of them ended up putting a gaff through his toe. Yeah. Oh. So... Please wear your shoes, yeah. please. Oh. But uh, he, put, he, he put the bogs on, didn't he, to he, keep the blood in the boots. Yeah, pretty much. Take <laughs> so that's a cracker. That the wide arrangement you can see underneath the jacket and on top of the shoes are the old, uh, the old bib and brace. That just again keeps you dry. It won't necessarily keep you warm, but it'll like, like, it keeps the blood off. Yeah, because that's tuna, right. You they can't go tuna bleed. fishing without blood no, everywhere, no, and they it keeps just the bleed. And, it, and they act as a bit of a windbreak too, so it'll cut down on the wind chill a bit. So that's the. That's a bit of embrace, which you can see. Hey, you no suck, pockets. suck it in, Trelly. No pockets will be sinkers. <laughs> So that's the that's the bib and brace. Uh, the sunnies are quite important. Sit down again, Charlie. If, oh. if anyone's been offshore without a pair of sunglasses, it is literally pain. Um, there's two different lenses shown on the screen there. The blue yeah. uh, and and black, they're best. If it's really bright and sunny, they're pretty similar to what we had today. Low cl like no cloud cover, really bright. Go with the dark ones. The ones Charlie's got on at the moment, uh, a lighter pair of sunnies, so if it's a bit overcast, but they're the, they're the sunnies. Don't go offshore without them because it'll hurt. And that crazy looking arrangement on Trelly's head is a thermo head buff. So we've, we've spoken about head You can actually before. pull that around your neck. Like yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear it like that. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's uh, what you're meant to do with a Trelly, you uh, idiot. It's exactly the same as the head buffs we've spoken about previously on the you're show. Like Beirut bummer. Yeah, but <laughs> it's exactly the same as the ones we've previously spoken about, but it's thermal. So there it's going to keep you warm. All the things you need. Gear. Come yes, and see us if you want to talk more about it because I know we're a bit rushed, but anyway, that, that's all good. All right, oh, let's get back yeah. into the calamari discussions. We're going to while Trelly gets uh, changed. <laughs> let's have a look at how calamari do their business. Let's have a look at some of this footage courtesy of iFish again. So Corey, just there, let's talk uh, the viewers at home through it. There's a male and a female male on top. Is that the male on top? That's the male on top and the yep. female underneath. Now that you can just see turned that. upside down. That's right, that's the male turned and back upside up again. down. Yep, he'll turn what upside do do? down, hold on to the female. You can see one of the arms grabbing the sperm from his funnel and he'll, he'll transfer that to the female. So, so hang the on, there he goes again. Yeah. What, what, you're saying he's hanging on to the female? That's right, that's right. And then he, what? Right, you, you, you use explain, one. Explain you it. need to draw your picture, Dave. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's pretty fascinating right, stuff. So the female's on the bottom, okay, and the male's on top. The male will turn upside down and th with one of his arms hold on to the female. Yeah. And with another one of his arms that we said that hasn't got the suckers, yep. that's the delivery mechanism to, to transfer the sperm from himself to the, female, the female for uh, to, to fertilise eggs at a later stage. Corey, did you just film a pornographic movie then? Um. Like, like seriously, because <laughs> that's what it is. Well, but, yeah, well, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I was just asked. Just thought, just thought we'd clean it up. SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, how did you film that? Uh, well, it's actually Matt Coopman, one of my mates, uh, yeah, yeah. Filmed, filmed that, and uh, he just got 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 he, lucky. He got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't the only one that day. <laughs> so he, he knows a lot about squid as well, so yeah. he saw saw the opportunity to, to to see them do that, and it was wow. right in spawning time, and yeah, he got the good footage of yeah. that. Very so good. What happens after that? So they obviously do their business and uh, yeah, look, what she happens? can she can uh, get the sperm and collect the sperm from a number of different males and and hold on to that sperm until she's ready. <laughs> Trelly, <laughs> no, don't say anything, Trelly. <laughs> until she's ready and, and found uh, a, a good habitat to, yeah. to spawn and lay her eggs. Okay. Yes. And so, then they lay eggs. Yeah, so she'll lay an egg. They're, they're like a finger. A, yeah. a finger. It's like a white finger. Uh, and that'll have about seven or eight 
eggs. Like a sack. An like egg a sack, sack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that'll, that'll have about seven eggs, little uh, squid eggs in there, and she'll attach those uh, those filaments of those sacks mm. of, of, uh, of eggs and all, all around the place. Now okay. she can do that once or she can do that multiple times. It doesn't. It's not restricted yeah. to a particular... And then they event. hatch on their own, do they? After yeah, a certain so amount of period after a certain period, around 40 days, it's temperature dependent, and wow. uh, they'll, they'll hatch and they'll be... They're not like fish that go through a larval stage. These yeah. uh, squid, they'll hatch as little, uh, little, squid. little squid, ready and feeding mm. with wow. little pigment colours and ready to ready to go. Wow. Later on, we're going to talk about how fast they grow and all that yeah. sort of stuff because it must be pretty quick. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Up next, Kramer's Mailbag, and we look at where some of Corey's tagged calamari swim in Portville Bay. See you after this. Talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome back to Talking Fishing. Plenty of Kramer's mailbag. Try and get through a few boys if we can. The hot topic of the year has been boat ramps and Kerry Lawton writes to us and says, Hi boys, great show about boat ramps. We are moving to Hastings soon, trying to find out. My wife will be taking the boat to the ramp and I will go out fishing. She'll take the car and trailer home. Then she'll come back and pick me up when I call her. Is he still required to pay? No. Is no. he a pensioner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Let's ask the councillor in Altona. Um, no. Because uh, she'd say, yeah, I want your 17 bucks. Yeah. But no, nah, Kerry, um, you are safe. Go home. They've got no way yeah. of finding you. No, because nah, essentially right. yeah. you're paying yeah. for parking. You're more not... shit, more people. Anyway, look. A jala pile. More, jala. Yeah, jala pile. <laughs> Do you wait. Week? Next week we're bringing the jala <laughs> pile in because jala's going to be here. If we can here. fit it into the <laughs> uh, This next one, David Burke. Hi, David and panel. Some years ago when I was involved with a local angling club on the Mornington Peninsula, I was asked to join a subcommittee to draft a letter to relevant bodies regarding boat ramps in general, i.e. fees, maintenance, parking, upgrades, etc. We obtained a list of the current councillors and address them all personally from memory. Only two or three of them even replied, all of which replied, not my area, which is pretty yeah. close to yeah, not yeah, my no yeah, idea. Still got the old in it. Yeah. Um, Parks Victoria also said, not my area. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had a sit down meeting with a local member of parliament, all of, all of which led not my absolutely area. nothing. Uh, it is mind blowing to think that all that revenue and yet still we have cars bogged in sand on shire ramps, jetties that have the wrong orientation to the prevailing winds and no additional lanes or parking while participation continues to grow. The infrastructure on the peninsula is dormant. I could go on and on, but what is the point? Jala pole, jala pole, jala pole. Done. Thank, thanks. In, Love man. the show, don't we? We're talking <laughs> to Jala um, next week about it all. Thank you very much, uh, David. Um, the next one, oh, Travis Dowling. He's, uh, <laughs> he's got something to do with fisheries. He must have caught a fish. Um, <laughs> he writes to us, um, some info on Marin, boys. I spoke with Rod Barber at our Mornington office about catching Marin at Devil Bend. Well, it wouldn't have been about catching trout or anything, Trav, because you haven't caught any. Uh, in summary, Marin are listed as noxious, and it is an offence to be in possession of live Marin without a noxious fish permit. You'd have one of those, wouldn't you, Charlie? Oh, a couple of them. Yeah. Um, however, Can I one? in practical terms, fishers can target and catch marron using recreational fishing gear, including hoop nets, etc., at Devil Bend, and take home a feed as long as they kill them as soon as practical after catching them. Oh, there you go. There you go. Practical. So yeah, practical. Uh, let's keep going. This one got sent with a stamp on it. Oh, let's, let's, yeah. uh, Anyway, here we go. Dear Dave and panel one and two. Apparently you guys are one and two. Yeah, yeah, we love your show. Very one helpful one. and funny. The reason we are writing to you... Oh, this is from uh, Robert Girardin. The reason we are writing to you is because on your last show, you'll have to have the Minister for Fishing on. What we want to know is can anyone own the creeks and rivers outright? Because the last couple of years, owners have stopped us from fishing because they said that they own the creeks outright or half the side of the creek. We inquired to land titles office, fisheries, etc., with no satisfaction. What we believe rivers and creeks are crown land, and as long as that we don't damage property, fences, etc., don't leave rubbish behind, we should be allowed to access the fish. 
fish. Some claim yeah. to have riparian rights, which only covers the amount of water they can take. We fish mainly in the northeast of Victoria, King Parrot Creek, Rubicon, Acheron, Stevenson, Goulburn, the Pondage, Eildon, etc. for 50 years. We don't want to go the way England's rivers are owned by rich people and anglers that cannot afford to fish. That's um, uh, Charlie? Yes, there is still people that actually own the land that the river runs on. But do they don't own the no, river, do they? They don't own the water, yeah. but they own the land that the water runs on. Oh, do they? Uh, yeah. There's so still can't some fish on it. a few old titles. There and like you said, halfway down the river, they own land that water runs on. There you go. Interesting. Right. Old titles. Um, very, very quickly, I need to get this one out of the way too. Um, there's some tuna nights happening. Dr. Paul Hardy Smith, he's a fantastic guy. He did all the work for us, Barramundi in Hazelwood. Um, and we'll hear about that hopefully next week with Jala. But these workshops are run by Dr. Paul Hardy Smith, all about um, how to keep your tuna good for eating or how to help release them in good nick. Um, they're going to be held 7 p.m. for free. They're open to everyone and they're at Warnable Offshore and Light Game Fishing Club rooms this Thursday, April 23rd. Portland, Ang Portland Angling Club Lee Breakwater just near the boat ramps at Portland on Friday, this Friday, and also next Thursday, 1st of May, and it looks like Friday, 2nd of May. I think I've got my dates right there. Maybe they're later on in the month, whatever. Um, you saw all the dates up there. That's a, that's a that's great good. little... Yeah. But it is good, yeah. He, and he's, he's great. Oh. He knows his tuna. Mm. If you'd like to write to me or these blokes, this is what you have to do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria, 3197. Or email kramer at ifish.com.au. And very, very quickly, just something to mark on your calendar for August, the Melbourne 4x4 Outdoors Show and Fishing and Boating Expo at the Melbourne Showgrounds, August 21 to 23, we'll be presenting a live performance of Talking Fishing on both Saturday and Sunday on the fishing stage. If you want to come and see us or just come along and throw stuff at us, mark it in your calendar now. August 21 to 23, Melbourne Showgrounds, come and see us live, boys. Um, I'll bring you be back, a pretty good show. <laughs> just, just want to, because we're not on, you know, like next week's our last show. We're not back on to August, so I just yeah. want to get people to write that in their calendars. 21 to 23 of August. Great show. Corey, you've actually come along and spoken at that show, yeah, haven't you? About uh, calamari. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There just you go. So, one up there. Now, we're going to look at some of the stuff you've been doing. I think our first slide up we've got is where... No, that's... Uh, well, we're going to show some of the movements. I think we're going to show another slide before that, if the people that talk into my ear can go back <laughs> a couple of slides. There was one. There you go. That's yeah. where the listening, st the listening stations that's right. are positioned in Port Phillip Bay. So That's right, they're everywhere. There's that curtain yeah. that I was talking about yeah. right across the heads, but you've got them everywhere. Yeah, yeah. they're everywhere. And they're, they're, as I said, they're not solely looking at calamari. This no, is no. all different species. So Can I just ask you, what are the, you, grab one, it's beside your seat there, what are they worth? Oh, these are about $1,000 each. Yeah, how many of them in Port Phillip Bay? Lots. There's seven. <laughs> yeah. But the, yeah, that's shared between, oh, between no, no, universities no, no. Hey, and whatnot as yeah. well. This, this, yeah. is, this, is, this now, is awesome. And, and are they funded by recreational fishing licence revenue? Oh, some are, but, and some are funded yeah. through the universities. Because yeah. I always just say, great use of licence money. Yeah. People mm. always say, what happens with our licence money? Well, here's a classic example. Mm. Um, let's have a look at the slide of where the calamari were released that you tagged. I think we've got that coming up here. So there you go. Yeah, so the red dot's there. And you can see that I've released them in the southern part of the bay. And I, I, I did that because because we're just looking at the spawning population of, of calamari. Okay. In the northern part of the bay, we didn't have really many mature fish, mature squid that we could yeah. tag, so we concentrated on the southern area. So you're saying the spawning area. happens down the southern end, um, very different type weed beds down exactly. the southern end compared yeah. to That's right. any other parts of That's the bay. Right. That's right. And a lot of different depths as well. When I say yeah. that, you've got shallow, deep, shallow, deep, right. all over the base, uh, all very over the tidal. place in the bay. And yeah, very so as well. do calamari spawn they like? tidal areas? Yeah, they do, yeah. But we, we found a, a, a strong link between the, the certain habitat that they like, yeah. uh, and that's you know, seagrass called amphibolus and another yep. one called zostra. So yeah. where, where will they find that? And the maps are, the, um, we, we've got maps in our report of, of where, seagrass, or where yeah. we find the seagrass. Yeah. Let's have a look at some of the movement of some of the squid that you did, or calamari that you did tag. Um, Here's yeah. number 31532. <laughs> that's he was, right. He was a 26 centimetre mantle length 
Calamari released on 3rd of December 2013. Yeah, so over a six day period, you know, it was tagged around Queenscliff, and this is this is sort of peak spawning time, yeah. and it just stayed within this area of, of, of Queenscliff. Went down along and started by that. Do you reckon he's moving by. with the tide? Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a bit. Well, it can yeah. do. And, this, yeah. and that could be opportunistic too for it as well, because yeah. you know, rather than swim certain areas, they, they use the, the tides to, to cover move different around, areas yeah. to, to yeah. move around. Let's have a look at the next one. Mm. Uh, this one you tagged at wow. morning to yeah, the yeah, trip. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Eighth of March. And yeah, not very long later, it, we found it right up the northern part of the bay. Yeah. So this is one of the only mm. squid that we've found actually move north. Yeah. yeah most of them are all, all in the southern part. 21 centimetres, so slightly lost. smaller. Yeah. yeah, let's have a look at the next one. We'll keep moving through these. Um, this one was tagged at St. Leonard's on the 16th of January and then uh, Gee, well, he got it. Did he actually swim down? That looks like the Simmons Channel there to the left yeah, of Mud Island. Look, I can't say which channel it's actually gone down. Oh, but, but he just ended up. He just there. ended up there, down near Serena Way, and uh, yeah, ended up they in the bite. So he could have been going out the bite. He could have. And the lucky one. last one that we're going to show this one here. So tagged at Swan Bay Swan and Bay. end up. Yeah. At Point Lonsdale the following the next day. day. Yeah, so that was about eight kilometres that went in 24 hours. Yeah. So moving pretty quick. I've noticed the so immature squid tend to be doing more Ks than the mature mm, ones, really. Yeah. Mm, 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 they yeah. follow a food source, do you think, uh, Corey? Yeah, food source and probably uh, the, the habitat and where they want to spawn, depending yeah. on the spawning season, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We found what a lot noise of do they make when they're spawning, do you find on that listing device? I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't downloaded that information. Oh, yeah. It's no. not that sort of a listening <laughs> station. No. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. Boys, we're going to keep moving. Coming up this week's Hot Spots, what's coming up on C31 Fishing, and a bit more on Calamari with Corey. Be back shortly on Talking. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Hello, Richie Minnow here. It's now time for this week's fishing hotspots on Talking Fishing. Marvellous. Lots of cold spots, boys. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I was down the peninsula on the weekend and nearly snowed. <laughs> oh, it was at four degrees. There was no way I was going to go out Howling in the morning wind. on the boat. Howling like, wind. Oh, let's get into it. Hot spots because we want to talk more with Corey about calamari. So much interesting stuff. Number one, Mount Martha. Speaking of calamari. Yeah, calamari, plenty off there, off the rocks, yep. land base, one of the best places. The other thing is, get it out there for your snapper now, because yeah, it'll all right. go downhill, the water temperature will start to yep. die and very, very pinkies, shortly. There's so. lots, of, lots of pinkies getting around too and a little bit shallower, you can access them off the rocks, no yeah. worries at all. Yeah, exactly. Keep moving, uh, Bo Morris is the second hot spot. Plenty of pinkies there as yep. well, there's been some crackers, mm. plenty of people getting the soft plastics and the vibes this type of year. Yeah, best, best way to learn how to work a soft plastic or a vibe, because uh, the pinkies are really aggressive. Yep. And it really gets you in tune with watching that line. And a few of these blokes around as well, yeah, I can tell you. Mm. Around Bo Morris. Number three, um, the capital of calamari, Queenscliff. And you just saw uh, Corey's been getting a few and tagging them and all that sort of stuff. Queenscliff would have to be one of the most productive places, Corey. Yeah, definite hot spot, hot yeah. spot for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, lots of weed beds. What, what would you say, if people were going to target a calamari, what's the best depth? Come on, putting you on the spot here. Oh, maybe about six metres, I reckon. You reckon? Yeah, four there to six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get them in deeper? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Look, there, there'll be a, a, a lot of squid that are outside the heads as well that people just of don't course. target. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, land based capital for calamari has got to be this one Flinders Pier. By far the best place. Especially and there's a lot of, yeah, mm. well, there's a lot yeah. of big ones this time of year. For, yep. uh, you know, and I wouldn't say that this has been the best time of year over the years for big squid, but yeah. it certainly is this season. I reckon we've been getting some crackers yeah, and at the and moment. So. And a lot of people really start to look for calamari and everything goes yeah. really quiet and you can confidently get yeah. the tiger. You can tell it's getting colder, which is starting to give you a few more land-based options. And the next one is a cracker as well, the Cow's Pier. Uh, some great options down there, pinkies, gummy sharks at night, Trevally, yep. and you'll get the salmon yeah, moving yeah, through now too. You get the odd whiting off off and wine, as well. yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. It's a great little, yeah. great little spot. So those wanting to venture down to Phillip Island, Cow's Jetty, um, get onto it. And lucky last, it wouldn't be the same show if we didn't talk about Portland. A jet tuna down to everywhere. Portland, the tuna are on. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. I know we didn't show a lot of photos this week. There's uh, plenty of fish caught. That was pretty, cause it was, yeah, yeah, it was a pretty average right. weekend too. And I know yeah. today I was talking to Sharky and he just bagged out today easy. Yeah, so heaps of fish lots around. And lots there's, of big, fish. there's big fish still there. But That's it for hot spots. Let's have a look at what's coming up on C30. 
31 very, very quickly. And uh, tonight you've got Catch and Cook. And I'll tell you what, Ronnie, he's on the Facebook this week. <laughs> he's on the text <laughs> messages. He says farewell to Coffin Bay and the big Sampsons tonight. It is a much watch episode. Good on you, Ronnie. Savage Seas after that at 10 o'clock. Wednesday in the morning, Ozfish TV. Thursday morning. If you're not watching this, well, then you're not listening to me telling you that on Thursday we repeat. But, Corey, you might want to tell your mates that missed tonight's show. You can say Thursday, 7 o'clock in the morning, plenty on. Friday, there's lots. Saturday, there's lots. Saturday night, there's lots. That's it for what's coming up on C31 because we want to talk to you. Um, mate, let's have a look at how you tell the age of calamari. Now, I think the first slide we're going to show is just the old standard fish otolith. Yep, um, that's that's right. like the ear bone, isn't it? That's the right. Fish? That's yeah. right. Yep, they've got a, a, a few got a different slide types of uh, ear bones. And this is the, the largest one. That yep. we, some people, anglers, might have had them at boat ramps and cut them up or had scientists cut them up. Yeah. Where yeah, they're, they're different sizes, different species, but you cut them and you can uh, age them, like counting the rings on a tree. Yep. And it's, yeah, we do that for all our major fisheries. I'm sure you can't count them with the human eye. Um, what under a microscope or something like that? Oh, even with a larger fish, even flathead, you can take the ear bone or the otolith out, hold it up to the light, and have a look to see these. Oh, count rings. the rings. Count yeah. the rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is that the same for freshwater species? Say, like your cod, <coughs> yellow belly, that sort of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. It's a fundamental thing for science worldwide, as we yep. need to know the age of them. Yep. yep. I think mm. the people that talk into my ear are having trouble getting the slides up. But anyway, <laughs> no, um, there is some good slides to show. It's just a matter of... Oh, there you go. Um, there's a fish otolith. So counting those rings that you can see there on the screen, that tells you what, one per year? Yeah, one it? per year. Yep. Yeah. The darker ones form during su uh, winter, sorry. And you know, there's a, a difference between protein and calcium that makes the makes Why the dark one per light. year? What, how do they...? Uh, it's, it's environmentally driven. Oh, so okay. It's a, it's a, that's a Murray Cod Otolith, and because you get such a difference between summer and winter, the, the increments are really clear. There you go. Whereas if you get something yeah. that's in the so salt you can't light one and a dark one, so it's one no, two. A light one and a dark one is one year. Is one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, now, so what do you have in calamari? Uh, what do they call it? Statolith. A in the statolith. Calamari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really small. The picture on the left there is a pinhead. So, and the right is oh. actually oh, the okay. statolith. Oh, so there you go. That's Sometimes. when you're starting to use a microscope. Yeah. So when we're looking at these, I've had to ground those down using fine sandpaper, have a look on, under the microscope and count them in terms of days. So calamari are all less than one year. So I'll be counting this to say yep. you know, it could be 300 days old. Oh, so you get a new, one, new ring every, every, day. Day. Every, every day. Every day. Every day, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, what size microscope are we talking here? They're pretty powerful microscopes. Times what? Like, like, <laughs> oh, a thousand times. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 And you yeah. sit there and you go, you go one, two, three, four, five. That's a better picture. Oh, and, 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 then, and then someone get that slide back up. Yeah. Um, so you get up to about 200 in the phone rings. Yeah, you say, damn it, I'm trying to count how old this calamari is. There's the rings there, is that right? There's the rings. Yeah. So we can't count those up. And look, they really are the black box equivalent of fish. Yeah. So when you can find them, because somewhere they could be in the off Western Australia, they could be off the Philippines, they That's can't right. find black we boxes can, these days. No, yeah. We can tell so much from them. We can tell yeah. when they spawn. We can tell when fish go out to, to deep water and yep. come back into shallow water. We yeah. can get their temperature history of what they've wow. experienced, just yeah. all from looking at their, their ear bones. What's the longest period of life that you've counted on a squid? Or calamari, so oh, it's a, for me, it's a, it's about 360 days yeah. old, but you know, they can get up. Damn it, just missed his first yeah. birthday. Yeah. Had the present bought, yeah. the birthday cake yeah. ready in the yeah. fridge. But I think it's around 380, I think the record. Yeah, is. okay, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. have you caught any like the ones you tagged? Have you caught any of those down the track? Uh, we tagged, yeah, there's been a couple of anglers that have been that have caught them, yep, uh, that have been released for about a couple of days or up to a week. Yep. Um, there's one instance where I tagged an animal and let it go 20 minutes later. We tracked it down, I threw the jig over and caught that same oh, squid that's again. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's cool. Corey. We just had a slide up, we might put it back up again if we can about sure. sustainability. So, yeah, yeah, you talk yeah, about yeah. calamari, you need to know that they're sustainable. Yeah. Um, I, you know, that's that's a completely different story to say the orange ruffy that's uh that lives to 100 years yeah. or so. So wow. a lot of people say, you know, why do we need all this information? So, and it's about, it's about, you know, finding out how fast they grow. Mm. I liken it to like a pine plantation, which is your calamari, mm. compared to an yeah. orange ruffy that's is over 100 years old, that's uh, like, a, like an old growth forest, how do you forest. How do you know that we've got a, a good season or a bad season? Like, uh, snappy, you say it's been a successful spawning, a poor spawning season. How do yep, you know? Yep, yep. Do you I'll measure that? 
Yeah, we measure that. Yeah, they've got Paul Hamer down at down yep. Queenscliff there. He goes out and uh, tows a very fine mesh uh, through mm. the water to collect juveniles so we can oh, see. Oh, so you're doing that? Yeah, so we can mm. have a look at the, the larval and juvenile fish that are caught and that makes us uh, develop predictions of what's going to happen in the future. Yep. Hmm. If people want to get more info about all your research, how do they do it very quickly? Just go to the Depi's Fishery website. depi.vic.gov.au, I think it is. Yeah, it might change around the next a little bit. Who though. knows? Yeah. Just, just Google uh, or yeah. give Queenscliff a ring and you'll get hold of Corey. That's it for Talking Fishing. Hope you enjoyed the show. It's our last show for the season next week. Another Much Watch episode with Minister for Fisheries, Jala Pulford, joining us on the couch. Until next Tuesday evening, stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing.